Hi, I'm Kelly from B&H, and today we're going to be talking with Matt, a B&H expert on HDSLR. Matt will help us better understand some of the HDSLR camera choices, choose a rig system, and lastly show us how to accessorize these systems in order to increase the quality of your video footage. A lot of this gear would make great gifts for the HDSLR user and those considering buying an HDSLR. First off, Matt, can you explain real quick the difference between a DSLR and HDSLR? Sure. So, so at this point, uh, all DSLRs are actually HDSLRs, uh, and HDSLRs are simply DSLRs that, that capture full HD video. Great. And we have some great options here laid out in front of us. How about we start small? The Panasonic GH2. Could you tell us a little bit about this guy? Absolutely. The GH2 is an extremely popular uh, HDSLR option. It's a, um, it's a mirrorless camera system, uh, but you can't really talk about the brand new camera, the GH3, without first talking about the GH2. Uh, both systems are based on uh, a micro four-thirds sensor and, and lens mount. Uh, this is a slightly smaller sensor than, than most other HDSLRs, uh, but it does have the advantage of being able to use other manufacturers' lenses via a uh, lens adapter, obviously, but uh, it's, a, it's a really great option for control and, uh, and options of shooting. That's definitely a great feature to have if you can use other lenses that you have from other cameras just by simply putting an adapter on it. It is, it's great. How about the GH3? What exactly are the differences between the GH2 and GH3? Yeah, the GH3, they, they definitely uh, stepped up their game a lot. Um, they went from uh, 30p or 60i video recording at, at 1080 uh, up to 60p now. Uh, 60p is uh, a really great option for slow motion. Uh, if you're gonna be slowing, slowing video down, uh, 60p is far superior to 60i. Um, the the bitrate has has been greatly improved from 24 megabits per second up to 72 megabits per second. Um, huge huge update. One of the issues is uh, because it's a mirrorless system, uh, it uses uh, contrast based autofocus, uh, which is usually pretty okay, um, but occasionally it hunts and and that can be a major issue when recording. So there's a little bit of an issue with the GH2 and GH3 in reference to autofocusing, but there isn't that issue with the Sony Alphas, right? Could you tell us a little bit about the new focusing system with them? That's right. I actually think that that's, that's probably the, the most standout feature on the Sony SLTs. Uh, all of the SLTs use a translucent mirror technology to maintain full-time phase detection autofocus, which is the very fast, very accurate autofocus that we're all used to in SLRs. Um, everything from the, a, the A37 through the A57, the A65, the A77, and then the brand new A99, which is uh, Sony's brand new full frame HDSLR with the translucent mirror. Um, they all autofocus very quickly, very accurately. It's a wonderful feature of the Sony's. Yeah, that's great. For an amateur or a professional, it's a great feature all around. It is. The, the only issue I've ever had with Sony, because I like to do photography and I like to do video, is the non-standard hot shoe. I can't use my other flashes from other manufacturers with the hot shoe that they have right now. Did you say sure. something about maybe an update or anything like that? Sure. So actually, yeah, it's great news. The, uh, the brand new A99 uh, uses a, a more standard hot shoe, so you can use transmitters like a Pocket Wizard uh, to wirelessly control your flashes. It's a really great feature. Um, actually, also in their in their new hot shoe, it's a smart shoe. Um, for the HDSLR users, it's a wonderful feature. You can connect accessories like an XLR adapter, so you have full professional audio quality recorded directly into your HDSLR. They've definitely stepped up the game with that. Well, it seems that Panasonic and Sony are definitely giving Canon a run for their money. I mean, Canon has been the leader in the HCSLR for a really long time. Can you tell us a little bit about the new Mark III? Sure, yeah. Canon definitely uh, basically created the HDSLR industry with the 5D Mark II as a revolutionary camera. Extremely popular. Uh, changed everything. Uh, the 5D Mark III was a little bit of a disappointment for some people, I think because of that buildup and that anticipation, that expectation of Canon. Uh, but don't be fooled, it's, a, it's an extremely solid performance, a great camera. Uh, some of the new features include a 22 megapixel sensor. Uh, up from the 21 megapixel, it doesn't sound like a lot, but the sensor is a completely redesigned sensor uh, with full HD video and the 16 by 9 ratio. Um, all that in mind, so it's a much better sensor for video. Um, they have two different compression rates. One's called IPB and one is called All iFrame. These two different compression rates really give the, the shooter, the creator, a lot more control of what they want to get out of their camera. 
And then finally, the, the new sensor coupled with the processor uh, creates a very, very solid low light performance. What exactly were any of the disappointments that you had mentioned earlier in reference to the Mark III? Sure, a couple of the features that, that a lot of people think should be included uh, is a clean HDMI out signal. The HDMI port on this camera uh, is, does not allow for external recording to an external device. Uh, it's a little disappointing. Uh, that's a, that would be a great feature to have in an HDSLR. Also, the uh, the, f the frame rates um, at uh, 60i and 30p are the same as they were before. Uh, everybody was kind of expecting it to be up to the 60p, like the previous two cameras we talked about. Right, for slow motion and, and effects like that. Right, right. It, it could it could be a really great option, but uh, unfortunately, those are missing. So it can't externally record, but there are two media formats that you can use with this camera, right? That's right. There's two two card slots. There's a, uh, a CF and an SD card. Um, everybody has at least one of those. Uh, so it is, it, it's a very solid camera. Great. And I know that we've already talked about Panasonic and Sony giving Canon a run for their money, but I've really been anxious to get my hands on the D800. Nikon's definitely come full force with the new camera. Can you tell us a little bit about that guy? Sure. The, uh, the D800, in my opinion, is probably the most influential camera of 2012. Uh, obviously, it's coming from Nikon, which is a huge presence in, in photography. Uh, we've all been waiting for this full force jump into HDSLR, and they finally have done it. The D800 has a clean HDMI output, which means you can record externally to an external device. Uh, and actually, when doing that, it actually improves the color output uh, up to what's called a 422 output. That's definitely a great feature for filmmakers who want kind of like the most high quality footage that they can get their hands on. Right, right. It really is a great feature. Uh, obviously, the, the other big standout feature of the D800 is a 36 megapixel sensor. It's the highest resolution sensor uh, on a 35 millimeter camera on the market ever. Great image quality. Uh, very highly detailed. What about um, the time lapse feature? That's something I'm really excited about in reference to this camera. Sure, that is uh, that is also a really nice feature. Normally, when shooting time lapse, you compile hundreds or thousands of still images into a single video file. Now you can do that in camera. You can set it. It will create one single video file. Cuts out a lot of the post production work or speeds up production. Well, thanks, Matt, for that overview on a few of the HDSLR options we have out there for the holiday season. There are great choices out there. In our next couple of videos focused on HDSLR for the holidays, we're gonna dive into the camera rigs as well as the HDSLR accessories. So happy holidays from B&H. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.